<laughs> Brother, can you take this conversation? It's him. Like, if you don't want to listen to the debate, take it away. Yeah, just, then, 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 then just stand in front of him. Don't feed him, you're giving him attention. That's what he's saying. The more you pay him attention, the more they pay him attention, the more he will stand here. So just ignore him. I don't talk to him. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and that's exactly why you should ignore him. Guys, move in. Guys, move in. Move in. Just bring your back to him. Seriously, move in. Nah, just leave it. It's just right. leave it. Go on, bro. At the end of the day, you can't control it. Talk, talk to everybody. Okay. You know, I've been listening to you talk about, you know, Islam and, and talking them down. But you have to realize as Christians, you also have the same invasive behavior of the past. Right? So for example, and I love I love when Christians try to ignore that you never went to this country and indoctrinated these people because you believe your way was better. The same way that Islam did the same thing across. I'll give you an example, right? I'm from Ghana, right? Before the Brit British came, we were Christians. We weren't Christians, we had our own beliefs. We venerated our own ancestors, our own gods, we had our own practice. Yeah? But Christian Christianity had a, a ritual where you go over to another people's home and tell them that you're doctrine is better. Most of the people where I'm from in Africa, we didn't naturally gravitate towards Christianity, we were forced into it. The same way Islam came into Senegal, they weren't practice. They, they, weren't, they weren't Muslim. But when they were enslaved, when they were inducted, now 99.9% 99 .9 of Senegal is Muslim. You have that same practice where you go to another people and tell them, that's, that's egotistical and arrogance. That's what I was trying to highlight in our last conversation. That's, that's, my, that's my first point when you talk about um, getting rid of Islam. Because your behavior in this country and how UK has indoctrinated other countries, you, you're now reaping what you've sold. You're now reaping the consequences of mass immigration because you've gone to other people to indoctrinate them, destroy their home and tell them that we have we have the message. And that's, that's, that's my first point. Okay, so firstly, as a Christian, as a, as a Christian, we can't deny the fact that Christianity and power have worked together in the past. Yes. There's no point denying that, that would be ridiculous for me to do so. The question is whether as Christians, all that Christians have done matches what the scriptures teach. And the point is, when I criticize Islam for conquering, subjugating, reducing to second class status, Christians and Jews, they are doing exactly what their book told them to do. However, the same charge can be thrown at Christians. But I would then ask him to show me in the Bible where the Bible says that I should invade someone else's land, subjugate them, and force them right. to become Christian. I have not finished. I have not finished. I agree. I have not finished. I did not interrupt ahead, you. Yeah, right. Don't no, interrupt no, me. No. Otherwise, the whole conversation breaks down. Yeah, civil, civil, civil. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. that's my first challenge to him. He's thrown the accusation at us. So show me in the Bible where it says that that's what we should do. And if you can't, then agree with me that when Christians have done that, they haven't been very Christian. However, as Christians, we are commanded by our Lord who says this, and all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. We Christians have been given a commission by our Lord to seek to make disciples in all nations and in all kingdoms, amongst all tribes and amongst all peoples. This for us is a non-negotiable. It does not matter if you don't like it. It does not matter if you think it's wrong. It does not matter if you don't want us to do it. We are commanded by our Lord to do it. 
We must do it, and so we shall do it. Over to you. I'm talking about the actions of outside the book. Because the Muslim will say the same thing to you. Allah doesn't tell me to invade. The Muslims will say that. It, a Muslim will come up to me and be like, show me where in the Quran it says, I'm talking about your actions outside the book. You can't call us a Christian country when this country, out of 200 and, 220 other countries around the world, this country, your said Christian country, has been involved violently out of what, 208, I believe? Show me where the Christianity is in that. You're telling me, uh, uh, um, um, show me a text in the Bible where it says, go to another people, enslave them, indoctrinate them. That's fine. It's not in the text. But have you, have you followed that? Have you followed that? Right, am I allowed as, to? As a Christian country, have you, you followed done? that? Or do you want to do back and forth? Or We're you, doing backward and forth. So you, you finish your point and then I'll make mine. Yeah, that was my point. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we've had our first admission. Our first admission is that the scriptures are innocent of the charge. Yeah. Which means that the debate is now whether the Christians were following the Bible or not. Now as a Christian, I'm happy to condemn Christians that don't follow the Bible. Okay. So the argument should be settled there. Because as Christians, if Christians are doing something against the Christian teaching, I will oppose them, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, as much as he might want to put the West on trial by proxy to Christianity, putting the West on trial is not putting Christianity on trial. I agree. And I'm not here advocating for Western civilization, come what may. I am only advocating for Christian Western civilization, ladies and gentlemen. And ladies and gentlemen, his argument is based upon an ignorance or a lie because I've debated every major Muslim speaker in this park and when I say to them what is your justification for jihad and invading other people's lands and subjugating them to Sharia law and turning them into dhimmis and for enslaving people and raping people and kidnapping their children do you know what they quote? They quote the Quran and they quote the hadiths. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just to show that he doesn't know what he's reading. This is a quote from the book called The Reliance of the Traveller. The Reliance of the Traveller is a book of Islamic feet from the Shafi school. And in section 9 0, it talks about why does the Caliph commit jihad? And it says, the Caliph commits jihad to subjugate the non-Muslim to Islam. That's thing. from the Book of Fiqh. So the point that the brother is missing because he's not listening is that when Muslims do it, they are following their book. When the Christians have done it, they are not following the book. And so the, the equivalence is a false one. Let's see if he can take that on board. Over to you. Can we, can we read that passage? Where he tells them to do that. Can we read that? Yeah. Let's read it together, right? This is your time. Where does it say that? It's in the book called The Reliance of the Traveller. No, 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 in, in, in the Quran. Where does it, where does it tell Muslims to, to go... You make your point and I'll make mine. So you don't want to do back and forth? You make your point and I'll do mine. No, I want to read that, I want to read that text. Okay. You, you made a claim, so... Well, you just say, that then you just hand back the, the, the conversation to me and I'll read it. So you don't want to do it like last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go back and forth. Right. You want to have a conversation or is it just like statements? Right, okay. So, let's read it, ladies yes. and gentlemen. And, uh, and I'm now back in control of the conversation, so I'll say my piece and then he can come back on me. Yeah. Right. So listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. In Surah 9, Ayah 29, yeah. it says this, fight, everyone say fight. 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 Does it say tickle? No. Does it say talk to? No. no. What does it say? It says fight. 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 Those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden, which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger. Put your hand up yeah. if you don't believe in Allah 
and you don't hold forbidden what Allah has forbidden. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Everyone. So the Quran is saying, fight you. Everyone. Fight you. Goes on and says, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book. Everyone say people of the book. People of the book. Do you know who the people of the book are? Yes. Christians and Jews. So the Quran is telling Muslims to fight Christians and Jews until, everybody say until. Until. They pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. What? Repeat that, repeat that. Until with willing submission and they feel themselves humiliated. Wow. In this translation it says subdued. The Arabic can be translated as subdued or humiliated. Ah, Put your hand up if you want to be humiliated for being a Christian or a Jew. No. no. So you do have a bone in this fight against Islam and Islamization. Yes. Because I don't know about you, okay. but I don't want to be a second class citizen. No I don't want to be humiliated because I'm a Christian. And I will fight to ensure that I am not. And that is when Christians can fight. That is when Christians can invade. That is when Christians can take up the sword to defend our brothers and sisters from persecution. Not to force people to become Christian. Not to impose upon them our way of life. And so, now that I've read the verse to you, do you agree that Muslims are following their book when they invade other people's lands and subject them because they don't follow Islam? Reading that text, right? Yep. If Muslim, we have this on record, right? Muslims have gone to other people to indoctrinate them and enslave them. Now that you've shown me this text, they are doing what they've been told. Yeah, I'll give you, hold on, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. For me, it's worse when you have a book like the Bible that's telling you not to do it and you still do the same practices as what you, as the people that you're denouncing. That's even worse. Because what, 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 what led you to go to another people and tell them your way is better while enslaving them, remember that, and destroying their homes and killing these people? What is teaching these Christians to do that? They're not Christians. Oh, they're not Christians. Guys, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You're debating me, bro. How, how can you get to stop. use them? How can you get to use them? So, hey, say this, say that. Right. I can't use debate them. me. Well, ask a question to the That's crowd. That's not fair, though. That's not you're fair. You, so, you're allowed to use the crowd, though, but I can't right, use Are you crowd. going to debate me or them? Okay, okay, let's not use the crowd. Talk we, to me. Do we agree? All right, cool. Let's, let me talk to you. Feel free to use the crowd, but I didn't debate the crowd. I just asked them a question. Okay, I'm going to use your question for them, all right? Cool. Would you agree that those people that went to a people to doctor them are not Christians? Right. Are Would you, you call them not Christians? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm allowed to reply. Let's, let's, let's go back and forth now. Come on. Okay. This is not church. Like, right, come on. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. he's asked a fair question. Yeah. But notice, he's now admitted my second point. Or is that? Repeat he's that. admitted that Muslims are following their book. Oh yeah, by, by but that standard, notice yeah, yeah. he says that somehow Christians are worse. No, ladies and gentlemen, because he hasn't yet grasped in his mind that, that he is confusing Western white colonialism with Christianity. Can I just can I just point out to him that some of the victims of Western white colonialism were Christians? The Ethiopian Christians were colonized by the white colonialists of Italy. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, and let's be clear, during British colonialism, the British governors would often restrict the preaching of the gospel like they did in North Nigeria, like they did in North Sudan, like they did in parts of India. So they weren't exactly using colonialism to spread Christianity when they actually stopped the missionaries from spreading the Christian faith because it went against the interests of the crown. That's why they stopped them, Centuries ladies later. and gentlemen. Centuries later. So you the brother realized. now who's losing control of himself okay. and can't maintain order and self-discipline, the brother hasn't yet clicked on that 
His arguments against Western colonialism are not an argument against me, are not an argument against any Christian here, because we're not here to defend Western colonialism. There were Christians in India who were the victims of Western colonialism, like the Thomas Christians. So this wasn't an egg. So his argument is a false one from beginning to end. But I would put this to you, that if your religion teaches you that you should invade other people's lands and colonize them, that that religion is worse than a religion that doesn't because your religion is making you into a worse person. The Western colonialists became a worse person because they didn't follow Christianity. The Muslim jihadi becomes a worse person because he follows Islam. But this brother is motivated by some kind of anti-Western diatribe, possibly, possibly an anti-white narrative. No. <laughs> So much so that he's willing to give Arabization a, a soft pass no. whilst criticizing and confusing Western colonialism with Christianity. Over to you. I am talking about Christian colonization. I'm not talking about, forget the West. Forget the West, because they went under the act of Christianity. They went and said, look, we are going to teach these people a new civilization. So when this lady here, right, and I'm not, I'm not here to insult you, but she said they weren't Christian. And I'm asking you, would you agree that those people at the time, just yes or no, would you agree that those people were Christian or not? I'll let you make your point and then I'll make uh, my point. Okay, cool. If you are to say they're not Christian, right, who, would, who, who are you to say that they are Christian or not? Isn't that power or that judgment given unto Jesus or God? Should, why, should, why should it be because you don't like what they do? Oh, they're not Christian. The same thing a Sunni, a Sunni Muslim will say to a Sufi, oh no, they're not Muslim. We got the right way. That's arrogant, that's egotistical. You're talking about Islam and says, oh, um, their book instructs them to invade an induction. But your book doesn't do that and you're still doing the same thing. So what, what is that now? Are these people Christian or not? Because I'm from Ghana. Again, we weren't Christian. Uh, uh, when you go to Mozambique, when the Portuguese went there, they weren't Christian. Uh, when Barato of uh, Portugal in 16, the 1630s, right, went to Angola and said to them, look, your practices of venerating your ancestors, we deem that to be unholy. We deem that to be devil worship. We will give you citizenship in Portugal. We will allow you to be our slaves peacefully as long as you accept Christianity. That's arrogant and egotistic. And your book is telling you not to do that. It doesn't even mention doing it and you're still doing it. And you still have centuries and centuries and centuries of invading people and doing the same thing. But are you telling me those people were not Christian? Because for me, the only reason why Christianity and Islam is so prevalent is because they have a history of invasive behavior. They've gone to other people to, uh, to force them into their religion. We didn't naturally, I'm from Ghana, we didn't naturally gravitate towards Christianity. We were forced into it. So, when I say, when I, when I say, of course, we were, we were Christian. Christian. All these Abrahamic religions are still new religions. They're brand new according to how old this earth is. I don't, I don't know if you've realized that. We have evidence uh, in, in 1974 they found fossil fuels look you can see, i'm not lying they found fossil fuels bones date back to 3.2 million years ago the name adam and eve wasn't even in linguistics because semitic language is three to eight thousand years old there was no adam 3.2 million years ago it's, it's brand new I, we, my, my practices, Western African Sub-Saharan practices, it's older than Abrahamic religion. We had our oldest practices, but now we've lost all these practices because of invasive behavior. That's my point. So it's not even about the West. I'm just talking about what these people come under religion to enact upon the people. That wasn't, they were, I was just chilling. I was in my home. You've come to my land. You've taken a two week trip by boat to tell me Jesus is the one. No, we, we didn't, that's not our story. You've, you've come to give it a story and to a people much older than you and telling them, no, Jesus is the one. Oh, Abraham. We, we, didn't, we didn't know. These are not our books. That's what I mean by invasive behavior. That's what I mean. But go ahead, go ahead. Your Where's time. That Don't listen to the flat earthers, guys. <laughs> Don't listen to the flat earthers. I'm not talking to you. So, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen. He's, he's, he's triggered. Oh, you. He's triggered. Don't listen to the flat earthers. They're an embarrassment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
the argument is being made the uh, the argument is being made ladies and gentlemen that are all these people were these people Christian I'm not going to do the easy thing and just say these people weren't Christian okay, I like that. that would be the easy thing to do I like that. but it wouldn't be the honest thing to do right, right. these people were for the most part Christian you heard that but the question was but the question really is are they following what the scriptures teach no. and the answer to that as we've already established is no right so there is no argument against Christianity here there's just an argument for more faithful Christianity here for better Christianity here for more Christianity in the West, not less Christianity in the West, and I totally agree with him. That's exactly what we need. We need more, not less. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he said that in Angola, people were forced into Christianity. I can back it up, right? I would like to see the evidence where people were put at gunpoint to convert. I would like to see the evidence where people was baptized or die. That's what I want to see. Or something akin, it doesn't have to be exactly that, but something that demonstrates that people were being forced into Christianity. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if he shows it to me, I'll condemn it with him. If he can't show it to me, he should apologize for making the claim in the first place, ladies and gentlemen. Because baptism, and this is where it comes to understanding Christianity properly. Christianity teaches baptism, and baptism has to be something that you do in a free context. You can't be forced into baptism. Your children can be baptized in a Christian family because the family is Christian, and they're going to be raised in a Christian context. But you can't go up to someone and say baptize or die because that contradicts the very point of baptism in baptism there is an examination about the book not in a, in baptism is interrupting notice in baptism notice he's not listening he just doesn't he just doesn't join up the dots and because he's interrupting this conversation he's going to come to a close because i've got other things to do than just keep going round and round in circles. In baptism, a person is asked, do you, do you reject the devil and all his works? To which the person says, I do. Do you believe in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth? To which the person says, I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, who was born in the incarnate, virgin, uh, incarnate of the Virgin Mary? A crucified under Pontius Pilate and rose again on the third day and coming back in judgment and the person says I do uh, do you believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord the giver of life and the person says I do and the person is asked do you believe in the one holy Catholic and a Polystyric church and the person says I do and do you reject Satan and all his works? And the person says, I do. And do you okay. commit your life to Jesus Christ? And the person says, I do. In other words, yeah. it's a choice. Yeah. The ritual shows that it's a choice. And so it is an anathema to force people into baptism. Yeah. Right, that, right, well, baptism.